Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Design City Skylines. This is episode 41 and we are back at Cedar Valley, where as usual, I've been doing uh, a little bit of work off camera. In this, in this case, it wasn't like a huge amount of work. It was definitely challenging, but uh, what uh, I ended up doing is replacing every single segment of train track that I have that was using the more train tracks mod and just going back to the vanilla train tracks, which as you can see in some of these shots, they don't look so great, especially when the catenaries are all like not aligned properly. I did my best to try to align them, but it's some, in some cases it's basically impossible to do so. Uh, I'm gonna call, go over in detail uh, or in greater detail about this uh, during the commentary uh, in the time-lapse section of this video. So stay tuned for that because I have a few things to say about, uh, you know, getting the rail yards to look amazing again uh it's uh, definitely not not uh not i'm not really happy with how they look now but uh they are going to look great but uh, this is going to be a long episode so I, i'm just gonna get started right now this is uh currently how things look remember in the previous episode we had the rail yard coming out in this uh, direction at a 45 degree angle I, I wasn't really happy with that so i ended up uh, changing it a little bit and as you can see I managed to get many of these train tracks to be really, really tight against each other. So it just looks much, much nicer. And obviously when all the three catenaries are aligned, it just looks much better. Uh, and uh, even uh, we have some one way train tracks as well in some, in some key places. So, I mean, everything is just looking gorgeous. I ended up filling this, uh, this big lot here with, uh, with some of these containers. I still need to go here and add details because this doesn't look very detailed as it is right now. But uh, it, it overall, it's just looking amazing. And we're going to be doing quite a bit of work uh, during this episode trying to detail some of these areas as well. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, a big one before I go into, you know, the nuts and bolts of this episode. I created this uh, little suburb here. It's definitely less compact than many of uh, the neighborhoods that we've been working on so far. And this is sort of setting the tone for a future expansion that I want to make uh, from the city towards this side. And uh, the, one, the, the reason why I did this is because uh, some of these new factories that I put uh, near the rail yard and some others actually were complaining about la lack of workers. So I decided to start, you know, expanding our population towards this side. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to detail. Um, by the way, this is not detail at all. I'm sure, I'm sure you know that by now, but if you're new to my channel and you think, oh, okay, whatever this, yeah, sure, you should, you put some houses and that's it, cool, whatever, bro. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm gonna come back to this and add a ton of details too, but I just needed the houses and actually it doesn't look so bad. It's definitely less compact than I was, uh, what I was doing before, like I said, but um, I, I think this could set a nice uh, layout for, you know, urban sprawl, which is something that we've been lacking here in Cedar Valley. And I know a lot of you have been asking for such a long time. So stay tuned for that. Maybe the next episode, maybe the one after, but uh, soon enough, we're going to tackle this. The same uh, same thing with this uh, road right here. Uh, I know I did this in the previous episode and haven't really talked about it much, but uh, I do want to get this road to go across the hills and maybe start, you know, the expansion uh, of some uh, communities back here as well. So, you know, those are some future plans. But in this episode, Man, this episode is going to be huge. We're going to be adding a lot of details to this nuclear power plant that looks uh, pretty okay. You know, it doesn't have a single, you know, what what we call like the real details, you know, like the extreme details. We really need to go crazy here and add all sorts of things. So hopefully we can finish all that in this episode. I'm pretty confident that I, that I will be able to. However, this is most likely going to be one of those mostly time-lapse kind of episodes. So... I'm going to do my best to to explain everything during the commentary part of it. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited. So you know what? Let's just get started. Let's just uh, queue up the music and, you know, let's take a look at how we can make this whole area super, super pretty. I really need to have a word with my past self because sometimes he's a little bit too ambitious. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to finish this project on, on, on this episode. I'm sorry to tell you to you right now. However, uh, I'm pretty happy with the progress. Actually, we're going to make a ton of progress during this super long time lapse. And I say super long because, I mean, I already put a lot of hours into this episode. And this is something that I usually don't talk about. But um, for those of you who are interested in how these this series is actually made... <laughs> um, 
I, th- I know I already talked to to some of you uh, who like send me questions on Twitter or Facebook or email about you know your channels and like tips or tricks. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, usually what I do is uh, all the work that I did. So for example, all the footage for this, uh, what is it? It's going to be like about 30 minutes of uh, time lapse. I think that pretty much represents, and, and sorry, and this is sped up footage. It represents maybe 40% of the actual work, actually probably less than that, um, 35% of the actual work I did for this whole episode. So what I usually do, in case you're wondering, is uh, I, I try to like cut, you know, the segments of, or, you know, or the parts where I'm doing the same thing uh, over and over again for a long period of time. So for example, I try to like have cuts of unique things, of like new tricks that I'm using or you new, you know, uh, techniques that I'm applying that uh, are different. So if I'm like, you know, let's say I'm decorating this massive forest, which I am going to do in just a few seconds, uh, I'm repeating the same pattern of trees over and over again, multiple times. And I don't think that's that much fun to watch after a while. Like it's cool, like the first, uh, you know, three, four minutes, but then it gets a little bit boring and repetitive. So I usually what I do is just get the clip of uh, me doing like the base pattern. And then the rest, I just don't record it all. I just do it, you know, while listening to music and, and minding my own business. And then when I'm about to finish, usually I set up the recording again so you can kind of see how everything came out, uh, even though I usually reserve that for the, you know, for the cinematics at the end. But just to like give you an idea, like there, I, I put a lot of thought into what goes into the time lapse. Uh, I try to like not move the camera so much, even though sometimes I can't really help it. Um, but I try to like keep the camera at the same angle as I, you know, as I plop things and uh, try to make really gentle movements. It's, uh, I mean, it took me, I mean, I've been doing this for three years now, so it, it took me a little while to to uh, came up with all these ideas. And uh, at the end of the day, I try to you know make videos that I would watch. So, uh, and I know that's such a cliche; everyone says that, but but it's true. Like when I when I watch someone who doesn't put uh, that much effort in, into you know making the videos the way I like them, it you know it's just it's, I'm not it's not like I'm not gonna watch them, but it it just it really makes it a little bit a little bit of a burden. To, to watch but you know I'm, I'm going on a weird tangent here point is uh there's a lot more uh, work that uh than what i'm doing on camera uh for example this is one of the 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 things that i was talking about doing this forest uh you know it's just me repeating uh, the pines over and over again i try to like give you a, a clip that's uh you know you know just like an example of everything else uh, of how the rest of the forest is going to look like so all the all i did there is put the pines and then some of the vanilla trees and in my mind that's you know probably a good enough illustration for you to imagine how the rest of the forest is actually laid out there's really no other it's not like i did like a specific different uh, type of forest uh and you didn't get to see it so it's pretty much the same thing repeated over and over again uh, I think that that is pretty pretty clear now. Uh, this uh, construction, by the way, let me talk to a little bit about what I'm doing here. So this whole facility, it's uh, what I'm calling the substation. Uh, this substation basically, you know, converts the high tension power lines to whatever you know the residential needs are. Uh, and uh, obviously, there's uh, all those transformers over there. There's a relay, uh, whatever relay station that's right uh, across the street inside yeah those hatchet lines um and i just try to find uh, you know props that sort of match the uh you know the uh, the power like you know the power uh station aesthetics or power generation even the solar panels in the back they're supposed to be the tesla supercharger stations which actually they produce energy which is kind of cool uh but i'm using them as basically fancy parking lots with a solar panel so i don't know everything looked to me at least a little bit fitting so that's that's why i chose uh, those things over here i'm continuing this uh this avenue but i decided to like have a bit of a faster way to go across the map especially to that new uh neighborhood that we have on the other side so just uh you know coming up with a bit of a different layout uh come you know just try to do something uh 
something that it's not what I usually do, which is extend the avenue and call it a day. Uh, I try to like branch out the different, uh, you know, the different directions. And then I did this uh, a bit of a super tight roundabout, which is more like a, like a flat interchange even. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on this side because I haven't, I'm not going to touch this uh, neighborhood to the right on this episode. It's going to be reserved for future ones. But um I don't know. I think this whole area turned out amazing. I, uh, you're going to see me add uh, a lot of detail uh, in just uh, a few moments. Uh, all right. So I actually have a whole list of things that I wanted to talk about for this episode. Uh, starting with uh, what I was uh, mentioning at the, at the beginning of the episode, which is the fact that I upgraded all the train tracks to basically stock or vanilla. And uh, the reason why I did that is uh, I've, been, I've been being told... Did I say that right? <laughs> that uh, the more train tracks mod, which is the mod that I was using to get rid of the power lines on on rail, as well as the um, you know like there, it actually comes in like two or three uh, configurations. You can remove the cables. You can have the uh, concrete base instead of the gravel and a few other things that I can't remember right now. Then really not important. Point is, this is a super old mod. This is a mod that I got right when I started the series. So that was pretty much uh, about a year ago. And um, obviously the game and the mods themselves have become way more efficient at how they handle things. More train tracks, unfortunately, it's a, it's one of those mods that it was like a pretty hacky hack, uh, or so I'm being told by the experts. <laughs> in uh, NCD Skylands, uh, who have been helping me quite a bit. In fact, uh, this is a, a thing that I've been doing uh, simultaneously, or trying to fix simultaneously with a Fresh Rob Corner on his San Minato city. He pretty much had every single train track, uh, you know, using that mod. So him and I spent our last uh, Saturday just like, fixing every single train track. I think he had it worse because his game... So here's the thing, if you don't replace every single train track, and then you disable the game, you save your save game, and then you disable the game, you're, uh, sorry, you disable the mod, and then you restart your game. What happens is, in some cases, your computer will crash badly, which is what's happening, uh, what was happening to him. Uh, in my case, it was basically fine. Uh, I did miss one or two uh, segments, but they just simply disappear, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, However, for him, the game was crashing, so his only solution was to run a script using uh, mod tools by Bloody Penguin, where you literally just delete the segment, obviously with the mod still enabled. You just tell it to delete every single segment that matches, uh, you know, the configuration for more train tracks. Um, I was being assisted, uh, I have to give a, a huge shout out to Tim the Turtle, whom I was big speaking to uh, over Skype uh, this past weekend, and he was just uh, giving me all these tips and tricks and, and basically the script to uh, make, you know, get rid of more train checks for good. And uh, as we were chatting, he told me a few things that I uh, that I did know. Basically, he is uh, working on a mod together with Bo Former, who Bo Former you might have known from the uh, the decals mod, or more uh, more popular, I guess, is Network Skins, which uh, I'm told that it's going to have the option to get rid of uh, the cables for train. Uh, relatively soon. I know he's like, apparently he's super busy with uh, life. So it's gonna take a while. I've, I've been giving a date, but I'm not gonna say it cause uh, I wanna keep things, uh, I don't wanna like set expectations that are that may not be true and I wanna put pressure on him, but it's hopefully it's gonna come out soon. And man, I, I really can't wait for that mod to come out cause uh, the power lines on the train tracks, as you can see from like the many clips that you have you're looking at, you know, in front of you right now. They they don't look amazing. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time trying to like have the catenary smudge, but it, uh, so there's they're like sitting right next to one another, especially in rail yards. But man, they, yeah, they, they're not they're not pretty. So, uh, thank you. Uh, so like I said, thank you, Tim Turwell. It was some really good advice. And uh, he also told me 
that he's uh, rebuilding some of his uh, assets. Uh, he's actually optimizing and re-releasing many of his train cars, which are really, really nice. I used to have a lot of them, but I had to disable them because of the try count and started using Beastquigglehausen's, but man, if he, if he, if he really does improve them, uh, I can't wait to, to have them back in my save, and I highly encourage you to do so. I'm gonna include the link in the description so you can go watch his, uh, sorry, watch, check out his uh, workshop. Uh, he's also working on a mod, like I said, with Bowformer, uh, I totally forgot about this, um, that uh, will allow you to get different skins for the catenaries, so. That's really, really cool. Uh, it's still in beta. I've been testing it, but uh, it's uh, in closed beta, so you can't you can try it yet, but hopefully it will be out soon enough. I will definitely let you know when that happens. Now, talking about uh, other things, yesterday, episode two of Arrowhead uh, Junction was out. Uh, I'm sorry, I just have to tell you about this because I'm so excited about this project. I don't want to like self-advertise all the time, but man, uh, it's uh, the city that Fresh Popcorn uh, built. Uh, it's just mind-blowing. Uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you already seen it. If you haven't, I'm going to include the link in the description. You should totally go check that out after you watch this video, obviously. <laughs> uh, why, why stop, right? I mean, there's there's plenty of time. The video is not going to go anyway uh, or anywhere. Sorry. Um, yeah, I highly encourage you to go check that out. And many of you have been asking where to get the map and the and the assets list that we have and even the theme. So all of those are actually in each and each one of the descriptions of all the videos that we put out for Arrowhead Junction. So, I mean, we've been on the homepage of the Steam Workshop for about a week now. Um, both the theme, the map theme, and the uh, the map itself. I know it has a lot of dependencies. Don't be alarmed by that. You can, I mean, there's only two that you really need. You need the Networks Extensions mod, and you need maybe the Clarity LUT. All the other assets are pretty much just foliage, so you, I mean, the game will run regardless uh, if you have them or not. The uh, and obviously, of course, the map theme. Otherwise, the, the game will just be grass. And that brings me to uh, something that I wanted to mention because a lot of people have been having issues with uh, with the map theme not loading and getting grass. Uh, Flux, uh, Flux and I put together this uh, FAQ that will be in the link, uh, you know, in the workshop itself. If you scroll down to the discussions part, you'll see an FAQ and troubleshooting guide. Basically, there's this issue with the city skylines. So when you, let's say you create a new game, you set the theme, you start building, and then you save the game. Then you close city skylines, come back, let's say 15 minutes later, because obviously you're playing the game every 15 minutes. I was going to say like a day later, but I, I highly doubt that you wait uh, a whole day uh, without playing City Skylines, of course. Oh, at least I do. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you instead of, for example, is if instead of uh, clicking uh, load load game, select your theme and load the game that way. If you just click continue game, uh, the game doesn't ask you what theme it wants, and it doesn't remember what theme you set. So you basically have no theme, and it will load with grass. Uh, there's a few other uh, problems that people are having, but um, like I said, all those are uh, pretty much uh, described in detail uh, in, in the description. Anything else that's not there, you can let us know. Uh, just be as detailed as you can when reporting one of these bugs. In many cases, it's likely that it's just the game's fault or that you forgot to do a step or, you know, just something new that we don't know about. So we'll, we'll do our best to, to guide you and help you through that process if you're having problems, but uh, you have to understand this game, it's kind of tricky. It is kind of tricky. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, finally, I wanted to talk about some things that uh, that I've been doing lately. I've been pretty, pretty active on Twitter, a little bit more of self-promotion, but this, in this case, it's, you're getting something in return, so I have to say this, but um, uh, I've been posting a lot of screenshots. Like, so for example, if you if you follow me on Twitter, by now you should probably have seen like five or six screenshots of this episode that I'm building right now. 
Uh, yeah, if you follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash toaster, you definitely get teasers ahead of time. So I highly encourage you to go do that. Uh, like I said, like I always say, all those links are in the description. And uh, one more thing, one last thing before I start talking about what we're building here is that, so like I said in the previous episode, I'm going to be out of town for pretty much over two months, which is a long, long time. And uh, usually every time I do that, like I said, I need to like pre-record episodes, which is not something that I enjoy very much, especially because it takes a lot of time. Like this, recording this episode took me four days. So I mean, that means that that's pretty much half a week. And I don't have that many weeks from here till the time, till the day I have to leave. So, and on top of that, I have to record Arrowhead uh, Junction, which by the way, I just got the latest save game from Fresh Popcorn, so I can't wait to go take a look at what he did and uh, and, and build things uh, myself. But uh, so one thing that I've been considering is if I can't make it, uh, I'm gonna try to at least post uh, other types of videos that I can, uh, you know, produce remotely. I've, I've been doing this before where I recorded time lapses uh, of me driving wherever it is I am or, you know, riding a train or something like that uh, or taking off from an airport. So I might do that uh, when I'm gone. And uh, another thing that I've been actually testing pretty heavily this last couple of days is uh, trying to... <laughs> this is, this is going to be really crazy, but it may just work. Uh, trying to access my computer remotely using uh, screen share. Uh, most uh, specifically using like Team Weaver, uh, Team Weaver, Team Weaver. <laughs> For some reason, I'm thinking about Dream Weaver. Man, is that thing even uh, whatever? Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, Team Viewer is what I'm uh, talking about. Uh, I've been running some tests, and it seems like it, I might be able to play the game remotely. Uh, the, the only problem is I'm gonna be on the other side of the planet of where my PC will be. So I've been trying to like test it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, by the way, Team Viewer is a, it's an app that allows you to share your screen. It literally broadcasts your screen over the internet and you can like control it. Uh, and I've been trying, I tested it this uh, afternoon from my office, uh, which is only, you know, like a couple, like 15 minutes uh, away from my house. And it works fine. I was able to play City Skylands uh, with minimal lag, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad. And even I was able to edit the videos uh, remotely, so that's promising. The problem is that I'm traveling to the other side of the planet, where and and lag and latency is a huge plays a huge factor there. So uh, so far, what I did is try to like set up uh, a VPN so that I could fake distance. I set up a VPN in Brazil. And I tried it, and it it looks kind of not great, but I think I can make it better. So I I, I don't know. I'm still testing this. If I can make it work, um, I'm probably gonna do a video on this because it's kind of cool to be able to play a video game from you know the other side of the planet, and uh, and even being able to edit the video and record and everything. I, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's kind of fascinating, so I might do a video because I'm sure many of you will be interested uh, in in that, uh, and just and even people who are not really subscribers of my channel. Uh, I think it's a it's a fun experiment. I know it's a little bit off topic from my main channel, but it might just be uh, good enough for everyone. And I'm obviously going to be using City Skylands as the example for for that potential video. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna give that a shot. I'll keep you posted in the next couple episodes, but I'm probably gonna start pre-recording as of uh, the next episode. So, just so you know. All right, let's uh, let's finally talk a little bit more about uh, this uh, project that uh, we're working on right now, because it's uh, like I said, it's it's been a long one. Um, I was trying to I was trying to start decorating, you know, the main part of uh, the nuclear power plant. And obviously, parking lots are going to be a huge thing uh, from both. Uh, sorry, for both uh, cars and and trucks. So right here, I'm just doing a, a bit of a. I was going to say a truck stop, but it's more like a truck parking. And oh, that reminds me of something that I didn't mention. Uh, you might have seen me do this a couple times during this episode, but uh, so the Move It mod that I uh, sort of highlighted in the previous episode. 
has gotten some updates. It has gotten significantly better. Uh, for those of you who are using it, you might have noticed this, but now like you can uh, move things uh, or fine tune things uh, much uh, much more precisely. Uh, when you hold the M, you can even like click and drag a, a, a prop so you can like move it uh, without using your arrow keys or things like that. And if you hold Alt or Shift, I know that that existed before, but I feel like now it works a little bit better. So uh, yeah, I just want to thank again uh, Sam. Uh, what was uh, your name? Sam Sam TS. If I'm not mistaken, oh man, I should have written this down. I'm, I'm gonna look it up right now. Move it. Sam Sam TS, yeah, I got it right. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, man. I mean, that, I, I, I noticed your your little improvements to the mod. I just wanted you, I just wanted you to know that. Um, sorry, so going back to uh, to this uh, just design, like I said, I was just uh, making the main area of the, or detailing the main area of the nuclear power plant where you know most of the action i guess is happening we have our own fire station obviously for security reasons just uh wanted to add a few lines and you know define uh a few areas so that uh not only looks a little bit more detailed but also you know makes a little bit more sense and looks more a bit more realistic uh, I'm I was also trying to like come up with different uh, configurations for the uh the different truck uh parking lots so that they all look the same and uh, over here this office uh setting i was just trying to set up some like custom paths like that i mean there there's really no road underneath or anything but i just wanted to have like a nice uh semi landscape i guess it's not really landscape because you know there's no land to escape <laughs> uh, just uh putting some uh, flower planters and uh some benches in a moment you'll see uh, you'll see me do that in just a second but uh, you know to like break from all the industry. Oh, this 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 area here is one of my favorites. I, I decided to do like a loading yard for uh, for trucks. So what I'm doing is like trucks are coming from the right, and then they're going into each one of those lanes, and uh, basically it comes from like the double lane on, on on the right, and then I'm using all these hatchet lines to like you know prevent, or at least in my mind, prevent uh, trucks uh, or vehicles from parking there. And as you can see, I'm using Move It to like readjust some of those lines. Over there, you can barely see, but I'm adding those uh, reflecting marks. And again, Move It, saving the day, allowing me to change uh, the, uh, or move the lines basically. It's cool, another cool thing that I that I uh, found out, and I think I knew that from before, but I've never tried it. It's you can actually hold shift and select many elements at the same time and move them and rotate them all at the same time, which is a, such a huge time saver. Uh, and man, I'm, I'm really, really going crazy for those decals. Uh, I, know, I know everyone is. I know Flux has been super crazy with that uh, in the previous episode of uh, Rhinestone and uh, Fresh as well. And I, I mean, I've seen other uh, YouTubers too uh, go crazy with them. Uh, even on Reddit, the screenshots, I don't know if you've been checking Reddit, but the screenshots on Reddit have been kind of crazy. And uh, here, uh, this, I mean, I haven't talked about the main topic for this video. <laughs> We're running out of time for the time lapse, but uh, yeah, so in my mind, I wanted to have like a huge grid for the uh, pipelines. And uh, I, I almost never get to use that little hump for the for the pipes. So I decided to change the height of the fence and, you know, have the, the little pipe go over it. I don't know, I thought that was a good, cute detail. So I just went for it. And as you can see, all the pipes pretty much connect all the different facilities. Uh, I guess in my mind that carries maybe steam or maybe some other type of fuel. Probably not radioactive, but uh, I don't know, something that could be used uh, in, in the many areas of the uh, of the nuclear power plant. I've been looking again, so many photos of different power plants all over the US and even in other countries. So been getting tons and tons of inspiration from, from the internet. But uh, finally here, just wanted to have a yard that looks more like a construction area or a staging area where there's a lot of uh, construction materials for the future expansion of this facility but uh, I don't know maybe maybe that's all maybe that's the leftovers <laughs> from all the construction uh, in any case 
we're reaching the end of the time lapse. Uh, like I said, it was a huge, huge project. And oh man, it just sucks that I'm not finished. Uh, I really, really wanted to get it finished, but uh, I guess we'll, we'll leave that for the next episode. And we're gonna be doing other interesting things as well. But for now, I'm just gonna let you enjoy the last few seconds of the time lapse, and I'll be back in just a second. And this is sort of the final look for this construction. And I say sort of because I haven't even touched the warehouses to the left. I really wanna come back there and add a few details. I mean, all I did was just add two or three decals, which is probably not enough and not acceptable. I wanna add a lot of detail, pretty much uh, how you see uh, things looking like here. I mean, there's so much going on and that's kind of what I enjoy the most about this game, just adding all those beautiful details, uh, all those cars, all those pipelines, I wish they wouldn't despawn as I zoom in, but uh, man, they they do look really nice. Uh, I took the, you know, I especially paid attention to the cars uh, this time to like keep clusters of cars closer to like where the entrance of a building would be and then keep all the rest of the parking lots somewhat empty. Uh, also, you may have not noticed that this clip is backwards uh, just because I, I thought it looked nicer that way <laughs> together with the previous clip, uh, especially that police car over there. Uh, but I love that area, that that uh, truck loading area. I think it's uh, definitely one of my favorites from this episode. And uh, this one, this one is the money shot. Just uh, a nice smooth pan across uh, this uh, new pretty forest. This, especially this freeway, kind of like going through the forest is just... I love it. I think it turned out amazing. But unfortunately, I'm running out of time for this episode. So if you enjoy, please give this video a like. That's very much appreciated. And also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. There's a link in the description to the full playlist in case you might have missed an episode. But unfortunately, that's all that I have to say for now. I want to thank you all for watching and really hope to see you in the next one. <laughs>